We are Five Live. I'm Bobby T. And I'm Krizza. And today we're going to answer a few questions from some fans. We have fans? A few. And they have questions? Some. Well, let's answer them. All right. <laughs> All right, Krizza. We have a few, uh, few questions that rolled in. Yeah. The answers to their questions are, I like long walks on the beach. Nope. Holding hands. Nope. Rubbing my my bare luscious chest against uh, against things. <laughs> nope. That that would be hashtag Bobby T. Nope. <laughs> and uh, going back, I, I really gotta say, um, was that B A R E or B E A R? No, because you're B- pretty hairy, dude. Yeah, dude. B E A R. I got I got I gotta give a you know uh, I gotta give some love to our fans. So you know I want to let them know about my luscious. Chest that's, locks. That's yeah. who. That's who. Uh, who we're saying when we have fans. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, you, we get a few questions. Yeah. Uh, they're rolling from um, serious our, face, questions. our yeah, Facebook serious. at Five Live VP. Also on our Instagram. Um, haven't really heard much from our Twitter, but um, we do also actually have a Five Live group mm-hmm. and a we do answer questions and open stuff on our Five Live live show. Yeah. So anytime you leave a comment, we will respond and we may even throw it up uh, on the show. So first question. Yeah, we're not that big yet where we can ignore our, <laughs> ignore yeah, our we can't, viewers. Yeah. We can't ignore you or make you like pay on Patreon for us to answer your questions. Yeah, like we're not there yet. Not so, yet. One no, day. One day you're going to pay for a question and answering. Um, no, but as it stands right now, um, it's a pretty simple question. Yeah. Uh, we know you are an anime fan. Yes. So? An anime otaku, I guess. What, uh, you know. what got you into anime? You know, honestly, I think it was Cartoon Network, really. Uh, they aired their Toonami block, uh, right after school. I mean, I was always into, into cartoons, you know, you're growing up as a kid, and you, you don't really know the difference between anime and a normal cartoon. You know, they're showing Voltron, they're showing Robotech, uh, in the morning, and to you, that's a that's, Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a cartoon. There's no difference at that point between, uh, Robotech and G.I. Joe. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's, it's a cartoon, it's action-packed, and you want to watch it. Yeah. Um, but I guess in terms of, um, well, even before then too, uh, I, I was into J- the Japanimation uh, scene. That again was Cartoon Network. They would show that uh, at midnight, you know, mm-hmm. at night when when Cartoon Network first aired, and they had that Japanimation block. They showed Ghost in the Shell, Street Fighter, you know, and that was more about the movies than it was about uh, the anime series. But when I first became a fan of anime shows was Toonami. Okay. Uh, it was right after school, so you got home, Sailor Moon was on, uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, yeah, Dragon Ball Z was on, uh, and they started, those were the first two you know, popular yeah, ones. Yeah, I remember this phase because this is when I was in high school, mm-hmm. and it was right before I started working. So I would come home, do some homework, hang out a little bit and yeah. then right before dinner was an episode of Dragon Ball Z yeah um, so I didn't know I was watching a, a shonen this that the yeah. other thing. I never understood what I was honestly but I, I loved it I like, didn't know much about the genres either until until a few years ago when I started actually like I guess honing my interest you know uh, now was that because what I wanted to watch now do you think that's because of the advent of the internet and more access to it or did you get Crunchyroll and you realize wait a minute there's a hundred categories here um it was actually before Crun- Crunchyroll I was on a fan site called Utaku Streamers, and uh, they filtered uh, their animes based on their genres. Mm-hmm. So I had no idea what a shonen was until I basically saw the shonen tag, and I I had I clicked on it, and it gave me a whole list of of shonen animes. And then again, with with the help of the internet, uh, I was able to kind of look up what a shonen meant. Um, some are a little bit more, I guess, obvious than others because shonen is a Japanese word, so I, I wouldn't expect you know people to kind of be like, oh, put two and two together, yeah. be like that's shonen. Yeah. But harem, harem is pretty. We know what a harem yeah, is that's for pretty, the most part. A slice of life. Yeah, that's another one that is it's pretty pretty straightforward. A slice of life is about daily life. You know, it's what you deal with. Yeah. So uh, for me, it was even before the. Um, the, the Cartoon Network stuff. The Toonami block, It was yeah. more, like you were saying, it was more movie-based. Mm-hmm. So I remember probably around, I worked at a comic shop when I was about 14 or 15 years old as, like, random help. 
um, and there was a lot of Japanese stuff there. So I did get to see stuff like the Giver, Fist of the North Star. Oh, dude, Fist of the North Star, um, classic. Yeah. And we would get uh, these bootleg videotapes and stuff. So I was able to watch some of that. Um, but I remember the bootleg tapes the, well. The yes. dubs were bad sometimes, mm -hmm. man. And I'm sorry, I just said dub. And now um, what needs to be cleared up here is back then, we now look at dub versus sub, sub as yep. in dubbed over audio or subtitled video. Yes. In the world of VHS, dub has a second word mm -hmm. or a second meaning, and that is it's a duplicate or a double of an old tape. Mm -hmm. So there would be tapes that I've seen of even like old Japanese um, kaiju stuff yeah. for uh, a, really a lot of the, the um, Godzilla stuff came mm -hmm. from a recording of a TV show. And then we're getting the 15th generation copy yeah, so it's of a tape this. of a tape of a tape of a tape. Yeah. So it was always hard to watch it in the beginning. Um, right around, I'll say about 97 or so is mm -hmm. when I really started. I kind of got into it a little more. Yeah. And it was because of availability in stores like Suncoast. Yes, that and well, which turned into Fye. Fye yeah. had a very good collection Beautiful. of so, yeah. yeah. But you had to be 18 or older to buy it. Yes. And some that's, of them, yeah. see, that's a big difference now. Um, we look at Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball, mm -hmm. Goku's a Kid, and Dragon Ball Z as just something that we see on TV and you can just go buy. Yeah. But when I was first getting into this, that had an 18 plus sticker on it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting actually uh, the original Dragon Ball on VHS, um, the complete series, a dollar per tape. Wow. And they were officials from Blockbuster in 1997. Wow, that's pretty good. So it was really cool to kind of like have them all, and that's when I think I really started to see like, wait, there can be a bigger story here. Yeah, I mean, you know, Toonami and Cartoon Network, I think, really paved the way for for stores like that mm -hmm. to have uh, to have that kind of niche market uh, because they were the first ones to do it. And, and their uh, collection only got better. I mean, Sailor Moon and, and you know, I think was always really popular. I, I remember seeing Sailor Moon stuff even. Well, Sailor you know, Moon you know. is interesting because it's a part shonen, part uh, magical girl, part magical yeah, girl, yeah, yeah. and a huge heaping helping of Sentai. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they are got, Sentai. Yeah, they've got the magical girl team and, and all that good stuff. Uh, but uh, I think Sailor Moon, like I said, was always a little bit more popular uh, than just Cartoon Network. You know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was always around. Oh, yeah. But Cartoon Network really upped their game and brought a lot of that stuff to America. Dragon, uh, Dude, I remember when the when Dragon Ball Z, or I'm sorry, when Cartoon Network was airing Dragon Ball Z episodes, like they were new stuff. Like I'm talking about right after the Frieza saga, uh, it, was, it was called the Android Saga. And that was like their um, their claim to fame. It was like, yeah. hey, you haven't seen this yet. Yeah, because what they would do is they would they would air uh, the 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 arc, and then once that arc was done, they would go all the way back to the beginning. So I must have seen the the um, the Earth Saga and the Namek Saga probably like Same ten here. or fifteen times yeah. because you know it, it took forever for them to get uh, these new these new episodes. So then finally, it was like. Watch. Here's the Android Saga. Watch these new episodes. You know we're gonna start airing new stuff now. Cartoon Network um, is airing stuff like pretty pretty frequently. I I, I wouldn't say simulcast, but it, it's it's coming out relatively quick. Back then it was like months between a new ep a yeah. new episode of the Android Saga uh, and then you know into to something new. So. so I see. I'm a fan. I think more with the Japanese stuff. I um more personally a fan of Sentai. Than I am of anything else. I like the live action. Yes. So Kamen Rider and Sentai Superhero Time is mm -hmm. a favorite of mine. Yep. I remember when um, Power Rangers came over. I immediately, oh. you know, and, and for the same reason that I love the movie Pacific Rim, mm -hmm. um, because it gives you one promise and one promise only. <laughs> yeah. And that is you're going to robots get big fighting robots monsters, fighting yeah. big monsters, and that's it. Yeah. And if you expect it to be anything more. Then you're going to be disappointed. But if you take it for what it is, you're going to be pretty damn happy. No, I, I mean I liked I liked the uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers when it first came to America. I didn't know much about like the Japanese version of Sentai, but I, I had a blast watching that when I was a kid. You know, when it was on in the morning and stuff like that. I had the toys and and all that good stuff. Uh, I don't know why I kind of gravitated more towards 
anime than than the Sentai. I, it's just you know it's just... because you're a stupid idiot, exactly. which brings me to question number two. <laughs> Um, the second question is because we are primarily a toy show. Yes. We do a lot of talk about toys. We mostly do anime, toys, and wrestling. Yeah. I think this, you could really boil us down. Um, but the question that came through is, what's your favorite toy of all time? And I know you do Pops. Um, and I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm all over the place. So, what is your favorite toy? Um, as much as I do like Pops, and, and I do enjoy collecting them and, and everything like that, um, I still think to this day my favorite toy is from the cartoon series called Mask. Mm -hmm. I was a huge, huge Mask huge. freak. Huge, huge, huge. Uh, I absolutely loved Mask when I was a kid. Uh, that that was the cartoon that I watched every you know every day it was on. It, that I was watching. It was number one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember waking up early in the morning before school and and watching Mask as I got ready to go to school. And I had all the toys and everything like that. There was one elusive toy. It was the semi truck, mm -hmm. that which was uh, I don't remember what the name of the car was uh, or what the name of the truck was. I should have looked it up while we were you know, <laughs> discussing what. Uh, what you know questions we were getting and everything like that or what questions yeah, we're we five alive it's off the cuff yeah uh but it was their kind of like mobile base so while while they were driving around to whatever mission that they were doing yeah the trailer yeah. opened up yeah the it? trailer well the trailer um where you where you would connect uh the uh the the car or the the yeah, the trailer to the, the trailer to the yes, actual to, truck. It that actually um, disconnected and became like a little small vehicle. Mm. Uh, but the the cab of the truck uh, opened up and it became bigger, and then it, it, it fronted as their like mobile command base. That's awesome. Yeah, it was such a cool line. I, I really like the mini helmets. Yes, which is which makes one that line very expensive to really get into mm, now. Yeah, well, because kids because have kids lost. Lose, yeah. yeah. For the same now, all right. For the same reasons that one of my favorite lines, mm -hmm. we'll we'll do a, a little segue is um, right here behind us. This line here, it's the Hasbro um, WWF figures. Mm -hmm. um, I think this line is a piece of masterwork. Um, now it's interesting. My my wife doesn't understand this <laughs> because I have stuff like the Sentai stuff yeah. behind me where it's just beautiful articulation. I've got the stuff here where it's just awesome sculpting, mm -hmm. and then you look at the uh, Hasbro stuff, and it's it doesn't seem like either of those things. Yeah. But I think it's a masterclass on how to get things done, and the reason being mass, mass production. This is what what I love about it is, and and I think they made this mistake mm -hmm. in making the new retro line, um, the Macho Man mm -hmm. from this line looks exactly like the Macho Man. Hulk Hogan is spot on. Yeah. You cannot mistake who these people are or aren't for that matter. Yeah. Um, and it does, they're a little stylized, mm. but not so much that you can't figure out who's who. Now, we fast forward to now, and the retro guys yeah. are using face scans and then trying uh, to back it up. Yeah. They're trying to back off and go, oh, well, the face scan is too perfect, mm -hmm. so we'll make it less perfect. Now the problem is, is that it because they're, they're trying to make it less perfect because they feel like that's more retro. Is that how because it, how less is? perfect is the way they view retro? And the problem is, is that's not it. Yeah, that was in back in the eighties. That was these guys' best effort. Mm -hmm. So you are now looking at their effort and saying your effort wasn't enough, and I have to back up my skills to meet your skills that aren't up to my snuff. Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize is you'll never be that good because you're not respecting yeah. it as much as you well, should. Well, that, and you're using so much more technology when, when these guys were probably, you know, doing doing stuff. Mm -hmm. It was by hand yeah. and, and reference. And uh, and the, the original sculptors of this line did a perfect, perfect mm -hmm. job. Um, I also liken this to why you could never, as an adult, draw like a child ever again. Because when I see my daughter draw a circle, even if I try to do a bad version, it's still going to be better than her best yeah. version. And 
I, you can you never go that, back. You have that more conscious state of what yes. you're doing, and, and you're putting that thought of, I need to do it this way, or I need mm -hmm. to make it this way, and it's got to be this way, it's got to be this way. And yeah. meanwhile, in doing so, they I think this new retro line is nowhere near as good as the original. Mm -hmm. So I look at that original line as being superior. Yeah. Um, that's my favorite line. My favorite figure uh, I had told you is sci-fi. Yes. From the, yeah, from, <laughs> from from the original G.I. Yeah. Joe line. I got this figure when it had first come out. Uh, kind of saved up my pennies. This is back when uh, Bobby T didn't have all the toys in the world. <laughs> yeah. um, so I had to, you know, literally growing up in the projects, I would play with my toy mm -hmm. and then pull out my sandwich bag from school, put my toy into the sandwich bag, roll it up, mm -hmm. put it in my backpack, because if I broke it or if it got messed up, yeah. I wasn't going to get another one. Well, there is an interesting story on why uh, that mask truck is my favorite toy you did yeah, tell yeah, oh so, so wait, before we get into okay, this okay, i actually yeah. do want to show i really do have my this is my original geez now he's 20 god he's got to almost be 30 years old at this point wow yeah um he's still fairly pristine i mean yeah, i was showing chris up for for a six let's see i'm trying to read his butt here just as made in hong kong <laughs> But, Don't lie, you're, uh, just, you're just checking it out. You're just checking, checking out, out the biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, this was 1987. 87 or 88. So I've had this now for almost 30 years, and it really is like almost box fresh. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that a kid could could get that far with it. I mean, the only discolors are the forearms yeah. and, and the plastic discoloring. Um, so yeah, sci-fi. Nice. And now, so you were saying so, you, had, you had a story. Yeah, about. my my story on why uh, why I will it, always remember this toy and why it's probably my favorite. Almost kind of like a Christmas story uh, uh, feel to it. <laughs> but basically, uh, I had always wanted this toy. Uh, I like I said, I love Mask. I had a bunch of their figures and and the cars and and the vehicles and everything like that. And I had always wanted this one. I asked every year for Christmas, uh, you know, I, please, I, I want this toy, I want this toy. And, you know, Christmas comes around, you know, we open up all of our toys. Chris is screwed one yeah, more time. exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, we opened up everything and no, you know, no truck. And I, I cried because I'm a little kid, you know, what do you... Jerk. Yeah, exactly. You know, I didn't. I didn't realize how much effort went into that into that stuff back then. Because you're mm -hmm. a kid, you don't okay, know what you your parents. Know you know what your parents go through and, and everything like that. And you're all not that supposed stuff. to. Yeah, and I and you know at, at that point again I, I wasn't so uh, uh, I guess I, I wasn't so I can't even think of the word thoughtful. Like, yeah, I guess <laughs> self aware is yes. really. A, I wasn't so self-aware about about it, and and of course, you know, I, I cried because I, that's all I wanted, and, and it was I want, I want, I want. You know, it wasn't about you know, oh my my parents. No, put, no you're you a kid. Know, yeah, put you're that a kid. thought into it Doesn't and everything matter. like that. Yeah, so I'm crying, and and my mom and, and my dad are trying to um, you know console me and everything like that, and and you know it's just one more year that I'm gonna have to wait in for another Christmas to to ask for this toy, you know. So I think my mother brings me into the kitchen and, you know, is, is making me breakfast, basically, Christmas breakfast, you know. And then uh, everybody, you know, my, my family tells me to, to come back into the living room. There's, there's, something, there's something I need to see. So I go back into the living room and uh, there's a, a box mm -hmm. in the fireplace, like in the... In, in the pit, they on went, fire. Dude, no, we, screw you, exactly, crazy. Because you cried. You, you cried. Exactly. You threw your garbage. We, in the we had one of those old school <laughs> fireplaces where uh, it wasn't like now, where it's like a glass door. And dude, this is this was open, and the only thing that that protected you from that was just like a metal grate that you could say Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a metal grate that you could easily push away. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> And so the uh, the metal grate is away, and the the toy is right there, or the box is right there in the middle of the the fireplace. And my parents say, you know, I think I think Santa forgot one. They they he must have um, 
he, you know, he must have just not delivered it, uh, you know, the, the first time around. Same as like you, a jerk. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so they go over there and they tell me, you know, they they, they tell they think because I don't even think there was a, a name tag on it. So they're like, I think it's for you. I think it's for you. Just you know, check it out. Why don't you open it? So I go over there and I open up the the, the you know unwrap it and rip the wrapping paper off. And it's it's the mask truck. Gotcha truck. And I absolutely fell in love with that toy <laughs> it's right, so in, awesome, right man. then and there. And it was the best toy I ever had. Uh, and it was almost like, like I said, it was almost like that Christmas story moment where at the end the credits are rolling and he says, you know, this no no Christmas is ever going to compare to this. You know, like this is the best toy I will have ever gotten or the best toy I've received or will have ever received and then he falls asleep dreaming of of mm. that toy you know and it was the same thing for me like i all Spoke of the up other, plastic marks all over yeah face. all the other toys immediately went to the side oh yeah and and i opened it my mother uh helped me put it together and, and everything like that put the stickers on it i and, had rolling and, thunder it was this very similar mm -hmm. like i want that commercial was on every day i had to have i was a gi yeah. joe kid yep yeah. Big G.I. Joe kid. I loved Mask. Loved mm -hmm. all that stuff. What I loved about Mask was actually the base. The the base for the good guys. Yeah, it was like gas a, that, that gas station. Yep, yep. Yeah, and the, the sign opened up and it, and it became the gun. It yeah, was a turret was, up there. Mm -hmm. the, also, the uh, the pumps would flip around. Uh, you could roll your thing in. It would flip back. Like yes. There were so many things that these did. Yeah. It really was... Um, we... we Say Transformers yeah. are you know robots in disguise more than meets the eye and all that stuff. No, it's mask. No, man. mask definitely. And mask was it was all about it's a car. No, dude, it's a flying Camaro. Yeah, like, and yeah, and that series three one we you showed me you had one of the toys for it that you showed me. Uh, Julio weeks, Lopez. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that series three where where the the show had taken that direction where it was almost like a wacky race. Almost wacky. Yeah. yeah. They're they're driving from one point to another point and uh, Mask is there and Venom is there and they're they're fighting against each other to to win the race. But those toys were were I think ahead of its time in terms of how, like how much manipulation went into it to turn yeah, it into you know, one thing into it because some of the early ones just like oh you push the button and the doors you know like yeah. the 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 um, Matt Tracker's car which was the Firebird or yeah the, it's just that, the, the yeah, things you, come up exactly you push down the spoiler. And then uh, you push one other button and the door slip up and that was it. These ones were, the, these the, Series 3 ones were a little bit more intricate. The two figures that I have, and I believe they're both Series 3, mm -hmm. uh, one is the Julio Lopez, which comes with an Indy car that you pull back the spoiler, yep. it, the wings pop out, the mm -hmm. front uh, reveals guns. Um, so there's that one. And then the other one, I can't remember the name, but it's a big van. And you pop the back and it drops and a thing comes up and it shoots off of yeah, the plane, so you look, and then yeah. that is also a turret. Mm -hmm. um, and when you push it, the turret actually turns around. Yep. Um, it's really, really cool stuff. Yeah. Right? That might be a line that we, we may have to fill the table Let's with that one find day. some mask stuff. Yeah, the mask toys were, were fantastic, and which, uh, which is really cool, a funny story, is when I was a kid, um, my my mother's side of uh, uh, the fa her family is Austrian-German descent, and a lot of my family still lives over there. And when I was a kid, I was maybe like 10, 11, somewhere around there, we had gone to Germany to, to meet my grandmother for the, for the first time and, and my uncles and everything like that. And they still had mask toys at, at their toy stores yeah. uh, when I was there. Yeah, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah, they, it's funny. I don't think I bought any, uh, but I, I just remember, you know, remember seeing them. It is it is weird to see it a few years yeah. later like that because of the time it takes to make the toys and mm. to translate and stuff. But there's a joke they make on How I Met Your Mother about that because one of the characters is from Canada. Mm. And they go, why is, the, if this is 1993, yeah. why does this look like 1987? And, and she goes, oh, we didn't get the 80s until 1993. Yep. Um, it, it's exactly that. Yeah. It, it's just, we didn't get that. They didn't get it until a few no, years later. No, but still, it was cool to see that yeah. stuff there. Yeah. OSW Reviews, we'll, we'll give a little shout out to that too. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge wrestling fan. I've been a wrestling fan since I was a kid, uh, which is actually going to answer and go into our third mm -hmm. uh, question. Uh, but for me, uh, the, the question was, was what's the thing that you were into as a kid that you're still into now? 
and uh, for me, it's wrestling. I watched it with my father when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. um, back in the old kayfabe 80s days, but we were really into not just WWF. My dad was also into AWA and NWA and all the territory mm -hmm. stuff and local shows. Wow, and that's awesome. So I was able to really see a lot of these things, um, which is why I love these figures so much. Yeah. I also like the Galoob line for... Um, oh, God, Galoob, yeah. Galoob made a WCW line nice. uh, in the early 90s. I picked up a, a ton of that stuff. So always have absolutely loved, loved, loved wrestling. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I remember watching wrestling with my dad, too, and everything like that. And, and uh, I remember even my, my mother, you know, being like, why do you why do you watch that with, you know, with him and everything like that? And and this was at a time when even even though it was kayfabe and, and all that stuff and, and, and everything – the wrestling was still good. Like it was mm -hmm. strong, sound, tactical wrestling. Like these these people had ability. It, it wasn't like how it wasn't at that point where you know in the Attitude Era it was just punching and and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like there wasn't as there weren't as many. There were skilled wrestlers in the Attitude Era. Don't get me wrong. You know, and technical stuff like that. But it wasn't as valued as it as it was. No. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, when the when. Because the curtain hadn't been lifted up yet. Yeah. Once that curtain got lifted, and you realize, wait, a minute, these guys are friends. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, uh, just a little bit of insight to what we're talking about. There are two moments mm -hmm. that really lifted the veil. Uh, one of them gets a lot of attention, and it is what we call the curtain call. Yes. It is when uh, Razor Ramon and Diesel, Hall and Nash, mm -hmm. were leaving the there WWF, and they were headed to WCW. And in Madison Square Garden, um, Hall, Nash, Triple H. X Pac and Shawn Michaels yeah. in the middle of the ring all hugged each other and high fived after having good guy versus bad mm -hmm. guy matches. Um, so it really showed, like, wait a minute, why are these guys hugging if they're supposed to be enemies? Yeah. This doesn't make any sense. Um, the time before that was uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan and the Iron Sheik. Mm -hmm. So the oh, Iranian, yeah. the flag waving Iranian and the flag waving American mm -hmm. were caught together. In a DUI where they both had drugs oh, and weed Jesus. and all this together, and Duggan was fired, and Hax and uh, I'm sorry, um, Sheik was fired, and Duggan was suspended and came back uh, a little while later. I think the other reason too is kind of the rise of um, Stone Cold Steve Austin and and The Rock. Mm -hmm. Those guys, we, you watch their matches. They don't really do a lot of moves. Microphone you know, value became it, yeah. Microphone the, became the thing to do. Exactly, and that's fine. Like I'm not. It was I love. Yeah, I, loved I love that the Attitude Era, and I, I remember watching watching that and everything like that. I loved Stone Cold Steve Austin, so like that. But you can see when you watch in the '80s the product versus it was what, yeah, exactly. It was you know, different. and there was there was more there was more wrestling moves going on than versus uh, just these like slobber knockers mm -hmm. as, uh, yeah. as JR so, would, like to, would like to call them. Now what's funny here is uh, if Martin were here, mm -hmm. this answer for wrestling would actually be different because we both got into wrestling at different times, yes. like in and out at different times. Martin picked up wrestling in the worst phase of wrestling possible in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. um, post-invasion, so like 2004. The worst is that wrestling. like PG, the PG era? Is that Pre PG. Yeah. Is it uh, post maximum aggression? Is that one of the eras that they were aggression. ruthless aggression? There you see. I know a little. I know a little. So bit, ruthless yeah. aggression had some good stuff to mm -hmm. it, being Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero. Oh, These were some oh, of the greatest matches. Chris Benoit. Uh, we yeah, could, no, no, we <laughs> could talk about Chris Benoit. Um, WWE yeah, yeah. and that. Um, these guys were the ones who led this new style of wrestling that we're seeing a lot more of now. Um, but it, they were doing it in a time where Vince was getting a little off the rails. He was he was missing the days of the Attitude Era, yeah. where it was kind of um, there was the battle there for ratings, but it was somewhat of a shooting fish in a barrel. Um, at this time, the ratings were starting to go down. That's funny. The, uh, the stars were aging, yeah. and they didn't put any effort into a farm system. That's funny because when you say Kurt Angle having good matches, I don't see Kurt Angle as that as a good wrestler because he was part of that. I guess toward the tail end of the Attitude Era, which, which I was kind of starting to to stop watching. Mm -hmm. So to me, he was just kind of another like another Ken Shamrock. Yeah, I, I'm and, sorry that yeah. you missed some of the greatest matches of all time. Like, mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar versus... And this is this is how good this yeah. is. 
Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania might be one of the best matches I've ever wow. seen, and I hate Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Like, I will say it directly at the camera. <laughs> I am not a Brock Lesnar fan even a little bit, um, but this is amazing. Wow. Dude did a shooting star press off the top rope. Kurt Angle did? or uh, Brock Lesnar, wow. a 300-plus pound uh, dude, did a full... Wow. Um, we're going to watch this after us because I want to see your face when you <laughs> see this, this shooting star press. But, um, so, guys... This has been a, Ask Us a Question. Yeah. And uh, if you have any more questions, leave them here in the comments or contact us at 5 Alive VP on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, you can also email us. We'll put the first time we're putting the email out. It is 5, the number 5, Alive Video Podcast at gmail.com. And you can directly email us and email us any questions. You can get a hold of Krizza through that, Martin, and myself. Um, yeah, if you have any bear questions. You know. Got any bear questions? Yeah. Whether it's B-E-A-R, <laughs> B-A-R-E, yeah. or B-E-E-R. Um, any of these questions, you can hand them over to us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess in the meantime, we're just going to go play with some toys. Sounds good. Well, we're we're going to wa watch a wrestling match. we got to watch yeah. a wrestling match.